Bobby, it is, as always, a, a, an incredible pleasure to interview you. I've had the extraordinary opportunity to interview you several times on my radio show and play your Ring of Fire radio show, which I think is the best progressive radio show in America um, and possibly the best radio show in America. Thank you, Richard. No, seriously, <laughs> Ring of Fire. So everybody, Ring of Fire. I, what are the times? It's on Saturday and Sunday. It's on Saturday and Sunday. It's a weekend show. I think it's different the different time zones, but it's around five or six at night. Go check that. All I you know, we, we just have an MP3 and I play it a uh, half an hour every week in my show. We are here to talk about a couple of things. You know, at this point, I, um, we're seeing with with the um, with the economic problems that, that we have on a federal level and a state level. We're seeing an erosion of public education. The education system is is the is the place of of um, a first action for cutting staff, for cutting budgets, um, and I think they, that that system really needs, and our children need a very strong voice in the United States Senate. My father was fighting strip mining in Appalachia back in the '60s. I remember a conversation I had with him when I was 14 years old where he, he said to me, they're not just destroying the environment, they're permanently impoverishing these communities because there's no way that they can regenerate an economy from these barren moonscapes that are left behind. And he said they're doing it so they can break the unions. And that's exactly what happened. It, when he told me that in 1968, there were 140,000 unionized mine workers in West Virginia digging coal out of tunnels in the ground. Today, there are fewer than 11,000 miners left in the state. Almost none of them are unionized because the strip industry isn't. And they're taking more coal out of West Virginia every day than they were in 1968. The only difference is back then, at least some of that money was being left in the state for salaries and pensions and, and reinvestment in those communities. My parents read us history every night. And they, um, I think their um, objective was to inculcate us with noble thoughts. With, and that was really it. And I think that that was the, the principle. They conceived that their principal job as parents was to, was to, whatever we did in our lives, that it should involve some kind of sacrifice for principle or for the larger community. And, that, um, and so they wanted to teach us about role models who had acted heroically. And they also, you know, I think in my family, um, it was courage was regarded as the primary virtue because without that, um, no other virtue was really relevant. After the war, he used the prize money that he, that the federal government owed him for capturing the ship to purchase the plantation on which he was born. Um, he taught himself to read and write. He then ran for assembly, and while he was in the South Carolina assembly, he single-handedly wrote the Constitution for the state of South Carolina, which was the first constitution in America to give women the right to vote and African Americans the right to vote. You know, he was a well-known national figure, but he's completely disappeared from our memory. 